I got my got my skull cap on this morning because it's, it's cold because I can't turn the car on, no heat. There's no heat. We got the heat of our praise. Uh, what I was saying, the first time it happened, uh, Sister John and I worked a, a long, we worked two events back to back uh, on a Saturday. And uh, as you know, Sister John teaches Sunday school, 8 a.m. And, uh, and uh, when I work two events, my back is usually so out of whack, I can't do anything the next day. But we were trying to get to church. So I got in the car and the car wouldn't start. I said, okay, I guess we're not meant to go anywhere today. So we went, both went back to bed, got sleep. I went back out that afternoon. I said, okay, let me see what's wrong with this car. Car started perfectly, like nothing ever happened. And it, nothing happened for another six weeks. And then the car stalled again, the same way. I said, now what is this? Last time this car did like this, uh, we, I wasn't meant to go anywhere because we needed rest. So this time, I'm reviewing, for those who already know this, the car wouldn't start. So I said, okay, let me go back in the house. And just as I'm getting out the car to go back in the house, this car comes around the corner loses control and runs into the wall right in front of our house where I was trying to back the car up to park. So in that case, the car wouldn't start because if I had moved the car and it worked, the car that lost control would have hit the car where I was trying to put it. So now the stall saved the car and possibly my life because it would have hit the driver's side of the car. So now the last night, I'm going out, trying to get to rehearsal, because you guys have seen the play rehearsal of Flyers. We opened this weekend. Now the car does the exact stall again. I'm going, okay, now, that's what we're talking about in today's lesson. We, when we remember how things and victories happened in the past, that's one of the ways of encouraging yourself in the future. When you remember just like, and that's what we're going to talk about, David. David recalled. Daniel recalled. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego recalled. See, Whenever you're recalling how God gave you victory in the past, when you recall how God moved in your life before, that's a part of encouraging yourself in the Lord because you need some encouragement to make it through a particular day or situation. And so when you recall the goodness of the Lord, God's power moving in your life, that helps you remember, that helps you remember that, that God's gonna do it again. If God moved in your life before, He's not going to not do it again. Amen. So this is what this is what this lesson I'm having to apply exactly what I teach. Blind sides. When your car didn't start, you're ready to go somewhere and your car didn't start. Or for whatever reason, you get bad news on the phone or you're, you're suddenly sick. All the different reasons or whatever it is that keeps you from doing what you normally were scheduled to do by surprise. Then that's how you deal with it is what gives you the victory. Either you can let it can be, it can make you depressed, and you be sad and sick the whole day, or you gonna say, you know what? And what I did now, this is what I did to slap the devil. While the car didn't start, I went on Twitter and uploaded about twenty uh, Christian visuals of encouragement. So the devil wanted me to be sitting there. Oh man, my car won't start. What's going on? I just said, oh, let me go to Twitter and let me uh, bless some people on Twitter. And then I went to Instagram. I blessed some people on Instagram. And then I tried the car again. It didn't start. And I went back and then I went on Facebook, uploaded some pictures. See, I, I was slapping the devil all upside his head because he wanted me to be sick and panicked and upset. I said, look, there's a reason. Now, it could be an attack on the car, but at the same time, it could be the Holy Spirit saying, no, a situation is going on around the corner right now that you don't need to be driving through the way you normally go. And if you got the car started, you would have turned into the street where there's danger. Or just like the time I told you when Sister Jonna and I were walking back from the movies, going to the parking lot. And she, Sister Jonna was, Sister Jonna was moving it. She was, I mean, she, she gets in her fast walk. She forgets my back is hurt. <laughs> I said, okay, baby, you go right ahead. I just don't leave me too far behind because I want to be your protector. But she, we were going downhill too. Oh, Sister John was, Sister John was humping it. I'm trying to keep up with her now. On the for those that didn't hear this before, on the sidewalk coming up the same hill were these three teenagers, and something in the spirit said, 
uh, I don't, I feel an energy from them. I can't really tell what it is. So as, remember, the sister Johnny is 20 feet in front of me. As two of them pass her, the third one stopped, turned around, and looked like either, there was a game at the time called Knockout, when a teenager lets you walk past them, and then as you're passing them, they hit you as hard as they can from the back of the head to try to knock you out. A stupid peer pressure game, this was about two or three years ago. Just as this girl turned around to either grab Sister Johnna's hair or to hit her, an unseen force pushed the girl off the sidewalk into the street. And she's looking around trying to figure out, what in the world? I said, God, see, God don't like ugly. That's why I said, from where I am. And then her friends started laughing at her, and she left John alone, kept walking, still puzzled about what pushed her into the street. And Sister Jonna later that night said, well, you know, I don't know. I mean, I felt this breeze, breeze, you know, there's an angel coming to protect because no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And every tongue which rises against us, the Lord will condemn. So that girl was trying to blindside Jonna and the angel, the Psalm 91 protection, came out of nowhere and pushed that girl out into the street. Hey, Lisa Mack, Ellie in the house. So see, that's the kind of, when we talk about Psalm 91 protection, when you don't even know you're in danger. You, we, 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 we've been protected probably so many times when we didn't even know we were in danger. So obviously that was the time when, when Sister Johnny got home, we reflected, and I reflected. I said, you know, it looked like, for first we didn't know, we just thought the girl lost her balance. But as I replayed it in my head, I said, no, the girl didn't lose her balance. She was on the sidewalk. She was about to grab your hair or hit you or something. And just as her hand was coming down towards Sister Johnna's head, it was like she got shoved by two hands by an invisible force that pushed her back six feet off the sidewalk into the street. And I told Sister Johnna, that was, she, she lose her balance. That girl was pushed out the way. And, and that's when Sister Johnna told me she felt a breeze. See, so see, we got our protection. See, we got, that's what we're talking about. Don't, don't leave your house without Psalm 91 protection. Amen. And that, that it is real. And the devils will always try to knock us off course or uh, distract us or whatever. Amen. We stay on fire. Now, where I'm coming from today, I'm, I'm uh, encourage yourself to the Lord. Now, that, that's, that's, I'm giving you an example of how we, how I encouraged myself just this morning to be able to bring this lesson to you because uh, first I recalled, okay, there's a reason why you weren't supposed to leave last night and maybe a reason why I'm not supposed to go anywhere today. Uh, I'm just going lift, to lift it up to the Lord. And even, and then this is what the real kicker will be. Last time I said, uh, in both cases I just gave you, after the car wouldn't start, and when we got our rest, and then when the car hit the wall, after each one of those events, I said, if this is the reason I was not supposed to go anywhere, that means the car will start right now. And after each event, when I said that, the car then started. So my test today will be, was the purpose of this to try to stop the fellowship by thinking I would not have fellowship if I could not get to the sunrise? So the, the test will be, once we end, and I'll tell you this online, once we finish our fellowship today, was this whole event trying to keep us from meeting this morning, thinking I would cancel it because I could not get to the sunrise. So I'll let you guys know online afterwards what happens after this event, okay? So now, looking at, we're looking at first, uh, first Samuel, we're looking at Samuel and Daniel, books of Daniel, first Samuel 30, uh, verse... Six. Matter of fact, when we hear David encouraged himself in the Lord, it actually came from this scripture. Now, what's actually happening? This 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 scripture is before David became king, and this is when Saul had turned against David, and they were at war against the Amalekites. And so, two things were happening. Saul didn't like David anymore because uh, his son Jonathan. Uh, befriended David more than and than, than David wanted. And, and then God was displeased with Saul because he was not obeying what God told him to do. So this is a time during this, this, this unrest between Saul and David, 
the Amal Amalekites were attacking them. Amen. Amen. Uh, oh, we say, JD, I'm riling up the devil. <laughs> Sometimes he gets frustrated. He come out of his bag and hit your car with a brick. Oh, he come. He hit you. All. That's what. That's what probably happened Thursday night when somebody broke my window, and nobody's nothing was stolen. Found out the next night, two other cars down the street, same thing happened when somebody broke their window out. So you know. So then I, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to go to bed with one eye open. <laughs> I said, God, you got this, Lord. Just put the, put the angels around my car. Put your angels around my car. After that happened, of course, the next night you figure. The same thing gonna happen. So I just lifted God, you got this. That's what we have to do. God, you got this. Cause see, devil wants us to stay, uh, stay in fear. Amen, Mr. Pythia. We may, uh, make sure we do lift up Sister Tanya's surgery. Sister Tanya had a surgery, it was having or had her surgery this morning. So we do want to take a moment to keep Sister Tanya, uh, one of our OG fellowship members, uh, to be that 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 her surgery will go well in every aspect in the name of Jesus. Lift her up in the name of Jesus. Take that moment. That she'll, she'll have a speedy recovery from her surgery. And every part and every aspect of the surgery will be successful in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so so let's look at uh, uh, chapter 30, 1 Samuel. Uh, now, this is why we we'll pay attention in, in the steps that David took. We're going to look at David in two places. We remember, if you don't remember what David said to the king when all the soldiers were scared of Goliath, he used recall even then. That's why he was so bold. He wasn't scared of the giant. All the grown adult soldiers were scared of Goliath. David, much younger and a kid still, had no fear because of the victories mm -hmm. God had given him over the lion and the bear. So to a kid, a lion and a bear are as big as a giant. So what is a giant if he can, if with the, with God's help, he defeated a lion and a bear? So what is it, what's Goliath? And that's why he has such, such empowerment. That was how he encouraged himself as David, the kid who boldly went against Goliath, against a giant, against a force who thought that no one could beat, especially a kid. And that's why the king, when David told King Saul that, Hey, and oh, actually, I, I'm getting a scripture ahead of myself. Let's look at first, verse 30, first, uh, 30, verse 6. Uh, David was greatly distressed. Now, what just happened? The reason David is distressed, the Amalekites came in, and in verse, uh, uh verse 1, let me, I'll read verse 1 to set it up. Now, it happened that when David and his men came to Ziglag on the third day, that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziglag attacked Ziglag and burned it with fire and had taken captive the women and those who were there from small to great and they did not kill anyone but carried them all away and went their way. So they basically came in and took all the people living in Ziglag. Amen? Now, because of the, of the people who did lose their daughters from this attack, uh, I'm right now reading verse uh, verse six is my point. Right now I'm in verse uh, two, where the women were taken. So nobody was killed, but everybody was kidnapped. Amen. Mm -hmm. So now everybody's even mad at David because of the loss of their loved ones, because they did not. It just just David was just the, the object of their anger. So now David has no support from anybody because everybody's mad because they lost. The, everybody from kids to old. Amen? So now, verse 6. Now David was distressed, for the people spoke of stoning him because of the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and daughters. But David strengthened himself in the Lord. Now, now then uh, verse 7. Then David said to um, Abiathar, the priest, uh, Amalek's son, Please bring the ephod to me. And Abathar brought the ephod to David. Now this is what I want you to pay attention to, verse 8. David inquired of the Lord, Shall I pursue this troop? Or shall I overtake them? And he's asking the Lord. This is what we all need to always remember. Before he did anything, he asked the Lord, Should I do this? And the Lord said, Pursue, for you shall surely overtake them 
and without fail recover all. Now, even though his flesh wanted to automatically go after everybody, his flesh is not what took, his flesh did not speak first. David, instead of just getting on a horse and going after the people, asked the Lord first, should I do this, Lord? And see, this is what we need to do with every situation in our life. Every challenge or confrontation that we come, come up against, whether it's a meeting, a confrontation, a family member, a boss, where there's going to be a possible confrontation, you ask the Lord, uh, Lord, should I, sh I'm, I'm, I'm upset about what happened. Should I approach them about it or should I not? Because sometimes the Lord will work things out without your help. Or sometimes the Lord will say, no, go, go on and make it known. And then the Lord will be with you in that confrontation and give you victory. Or sometimes he gives you the victory without the confrontation. But we need to always ask the Lord, how should I deal with this? And the Holy Spirit will give you the answer because once we say, Holy Spirit, the Lord is speaking to us through the Holy Spirit. How should I deal with this situation? Never do anything by a knee-jerk reaction. Knee-jerk reactions will almost always get us in trouble because a knee-jerk reaction is the flesh talking, not the spirit. We want to always submit everything we deal with in life to the spirit first and ask the Holy Spirit for guidance. Make sure we say the right thing. Make sure we react the right way. And that way the situation will be dealt with in an orderly fashion. When we get upset and we get involved, we're going to lose our temper, say something we regret, hurt somebody emotionally, and now we're going to say, oh man, I'm really sorry I said that. you sorry you said that, but you said it. See, once the words come out your mouth and do damage, even when you say, I'm really sorry I said that, it's too late because the dagger has already hit them in the heart. They may say, okay, it's okay, it's okay. No, it's okay they sing with their mouth, but the dagger is still sticking in their heart because your knee-jerk reaction was to say something to intentionally hurt them because they said something to you that made you mad, that got you upset, your knee-jerk reaction was to say something back equally as painful to make them hurt as much emotionally as they hurt you. Now that's tit for tat. That never that never works out successfully because when you go tit for tat, now it's flesh versus flesh. That's why we always stay in the spirit. Uh, stay quiet. You just count to 10. Uh, like the, in Bad Boys, grab your ears, woo whatever you need to keep calm and don't let your mouth speak before thinking. Always think about what you're about to say, especially when somebody upsets you because the words you're about to speak is going to determine what's going to happen from that point on. You're going to either speak death into that confrontation or you're going to speak victory into that confrontation. When you let the Holy Spirit guide your words, the right thing's going to be said and you won't be in trouble. Amen. Amen. You have to renounce it. Amen, Lena. And see, and even when you renounce it, that's what I'm saying. Once you say something and you're really sorry that you said it, you have to make sure that you renounce it. And then, and, and then, like I said, you go on to still say the words, I'm really sorry I said that. I really am sorry. Now, the person you said whatever to, they don't have to forgive you. See, we, we have to forgive those who hurt us. But once we've done damage to somebody else, they don't have to forgive us. So we can ask forgiveness and we can say, I'm really sorry what I said. But sometimes you reap what you sow when you let your words fly out your mouth without thought. And it did its damage. And it's up to them to decide whether they forgive you or not. They may never forgive you for the rest of their life. And that's something you'll have to live with. But you, at least you did your job. You did say, I'm really sorry. And then you pray to God, Lord, I'm really I'm really." Forgive my tongue, Lord, today. I said something that I, I was I was vicious. I was venomous. I said something to hurt somebody, Lord. Please forgive me. And you tell them, I'm really sorry. I really am sorry. I had a bad day. I really didn't mean to say that. That's all you can do. That's all you can do. You cannot make them forgive you. And then just live with it and pray that they will forgive you down the line and go, go about there. Mm -hmm. Now, so that's, now, in verse 6, that's where, that's where the term David strengthened himself in the Lord. Now, notice, they didn't tell us what did David do to strengthen himself. Because we have to recall, David's personality is one who remembers past victories with the Lord. So, 
in, in his personality, he's now he recalls three victories. He recalls victory over the lion, victory over the bear, and victory over a giant. So if he's been victorious over three giants, as far as he's concerned, when he's encouraging himself, well, God was with me before, God's going to be with me now. As I go after these people who just kidnapped all these people, I know God's going to be with me because God's been with me three separate times. And if God was with me before, he's going to be with me again. Now, that's really what's in between the verses. They didn't have to tell us. What did, what did David do to encourage himself? Because David showed us his character as a kid. So that's basically what encouraging, one of the ways to encourage yourself. You may have a time when you can't get on fellowship. You can't get to archives. And you're going through an attack of depression and fear and anxiety. And you can't get to anything that you normally do daily. Fellowship can't get people to pray for you. Now that's when you start remembering. God is with your own words. You start speaking your own words. Faith comes by hearing. It doesn't have to be me talking. It doesn't have to be the fellowship talking. If you're saying the word of God out loud, you hear yourself talking. And that's as powerful as me saying it, as the fellowship saying it. And now you're encouraging yourself in the Lord because you're now speaking God's word over your situation. Amen. So that's that's one of the ways I want to make sure because we've been we've been sharing with each other over several weeks now that that much of the fellowship, all of us all of us are going through something. It, it, it may be different levels of something. Maybe we might maybe we plug now. Thank you. One second. Get the charger back in. It it doesn't matter what we're going through. We all know that. We all know we we all got something. If somebody tells you, no, my life is perfect, I'm not going through anything, they are a lie. <laughs> Doesn't matter how wealthy you are, how great things are going, the devil is going to always try to steal your joy no matter what your level of su success is, no matter what your level of prosperity is. The devil is going to be attacking you, whether you're rich or poor, because he does not like anyone to have joy. Amen? So... <laughs> Uh, Goliath is often in the spirit and the mind. When we speak, when we're weak, he hears our cry. That's yes, right. Power of the name of Jesus. We remember power of the name of Jesus, and that's why we remember the promises of God when we've been given authority over all the power of the enemy. There's nothing too big for our God, like it says in Ezekiel. Is anything too big for our God? No. Nothing's too big for our God. So when we remember the power of the name of Jesus, power of the blood of Jesus, nothing's too big for our God. Greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. Those are just, just those right there are scriptures that, that empower you. Amen. Now, in the case of, uh, now, if you want to recall that, uh, that's uh, when David actually recalled his victory over the bear. In case you want to go back, I'll write this under the video as well. 1 Samuel 17 Verse 33 to 37. First Samuel 17. You don't have to go, right, go there right now. Just write it down. Uh, First Samuel 17, verse 33 to 37. That's the scriptures where the king asked him, how do you think you're going to defeat Goliath? And then David recalled his victory. That's where you find that scripture and that, that recall. And then let's go to uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Abednego. Daniel 3. Daniel 3, go to Daniel here, uh, Daniel 3, uh, 15 through 18, Daniel chapter 3, 15 through 18, now that's where, remember uh, Shadrach, Meshach, that's the fiery furnace, and remember, uh, remember in the verses uh, 15 through 18, let me get my... I'm trying to hold the camera here. One second. Let me stabilize the camera so I can turn to the page. All right. Okay. Daniel 3. Uh. Come here, Daniel. Where you, where you had, Daniel? There you are. Okay. Daniel chapter 3, verse 15. Now, this is the, the situation they had was when 
the the uh, the the haters of Daniel convinced the king that you should pass a law that if anybody is praying to anybody but you, O king, that they need to be punished by being thrown into a furnace. See, they they knew how David prayed, but they hated David because of the favor he got from the king. So they convinced the king, and the king wasn't really uh, uh, sure about this. Uh, they said, well, look, you passed this law, and, and that's and that's explained in, uh, let's see, verse, uh, I, I, I covered this the other day about them. Now, King Nebuchadnezzar worshipped the golden image. I'm, I'm confusing the lion's den. In this one, the law was you shall only worship the golden calf, and they knew David worshipped uh, God Almighty. Now, verse 13, Nebuchadnezzar asked him, is it true? Uh, look at look at verse. Uh, I'm gonna start at verse uh, uh, fourteen. Daniel chapter. Let's see. This this is chapter three, verse fourteen. Nebuchadnezzar spoke. Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the gold image which I have set up? Now, if you're ready at the time, you hear my trumpet the flute, harp, lyre, and psaltery, and symphony, with all the music, you fall down and worship the image which I have made good. But if you do not worship, you shall be cast immediately into the midst of burning fire. And who is God will deliver you? Uh, and who is the God that will deliver you from my hands? Now, that's the situation. They need to encourage themselves because you've just been told that if you don't worship my golden image, you will be thrown into fiery service, into fire furnace. Uh, that's a good time to encourage yourself when you think you're about to be thrown in a fiery service, a furnace. So what do they say? Uh, so this is their answer. Verse 17. Well, uh, no, verse 16. They said, uh, we have no need to answer this question. Basically, I'm paraphrasing. We have no need to answer you in this matter. If it is the case, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fire furnace, and he will deliver us from your hand, O king. But if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we do not serve your gods, nor will we worship the golden image which you have set up. <laughs> Bold. They just told the king straight to his face, I don't care. Throw me in the fire furnace. I don't care if God saves me, God doesn't save me. I'm still not going to worship your golden image. Now, you got to be prayed up. You got to be encouraged to face off the king who just told you, I'm going to throw you in a fiery furnace if you don't worship my golden <laughs> my golden God that he built. And see, there is their confidence in the Lord. See, when we talk about confident faith, all the promises in the word, all, all the victories, the, the promise in the word. See, when you're on top of it and close to the Lord, and, and we, we come here every day, we praise and we sing praise and worship, we pray. When you're on fire for the Lord, those are ways of encouraging yourself. And I invite you to, if you haven't already done it, and I told you this way back, go through the Bible and put together your, your most favorite scriptures all together on one page. The, the, the scriptures that really make you excited, the scriptures that empower you, the scriptures that give you confidence in God's power. You put those scriptures back to back, and when you're going through something and you feel depression trying to get to you, not getting you, when you feel depression trying to pull you down, you start reading those empowering verses. That's encouraging yourself in the Lord. You're using God's word to deflect the attack of depression, negativity, weakness of mind and spirit, because now you're reading the empowering word of God. And that's what gives you lifted up and encourages yourself to walk in victory. That's why they had such boldness to tell the king, I don't care what you do to me. God's going to save me. And if it's not, I'm paraphrasing, of course, God's going to save me either. God's going to save me from the furnace. And even if God doesn't save me from the furnace, I'm still not going to worship your God. That means I'm going to go out of here praising God. No matter how I go, I'm going to be praising the Lord. Amen. So that's that I want to encourage you all to really do. You'd be surprised. That's what like a lot of times you hear me on Friday or Saturday night, and I'm reading I'm reading uh, different scriptures on certain topics. 
uh, victory in times of trouble. Uh, I put prosperity scriptures together. I put uh, uh, empowered scriptures together. Whatever works for you to get your spirit excited about the word of God, that you just love certain scriptures, you'll be surprised when you put all those scriptures together, the empowerment it gives you when you read them confidently. You read them boldly because you're talking to the devil. The devil's trying to steal your joy and you start reading the word of God instead of getting depressed, you start reading the word of God, slapping him, up, slapping him all upside the head with the Bible, with the Bible and the word of God. That's right. Faith comes by hearing. And remember, it doesn't have to be my voice. It doesn't have to be the fellowship's voice. If you're reading the, and do read the word out loud, read the word out loud is re, you talking to yourself. Just like when a boxer is fighting somebody and he needs to encourage himself. He says, okay, I got this. I got this. I can do this. I can beat this guy. I can beat this guy. He goes out there and knocks the guy out. Now, what is he saying in the corner? I can do this. He's hearing himself say, I can do this. I can beat this guy. I can beat this. Now, what we're saying in life, I can beat this situation. No, God, nothing's too big for my God. I got this. I got this. No, no. What you're doing is keeping fear out. You're keeping depression out. You're keeping anxiety out because you're hearing yourself speak encouragement to yourself. That's why faith comes by hearing. Don't It doesn't say faith comes by thinking. You can think the same thing. But it's something about when you actually hear the word of God going into your own ears, no matter who's saying it, you hear the word of God, it gives you a different type of energy to be stronger. You feed your faith and starve in the flesh. Feed your faith and starve in the doubt. Amen. Feed the spirit and starve in the flesh. Feed your, your faith and starve in the doubt. Amen. So that's what they that's what they did there. And my other uh, one other uh oh son, son's changing angle. Uh then of course the lions did Daniel uh what is that? Daniel six. Daniel six. Daniel chapter six. Same thing happened again with the lions den. So I'm just trying to let you see examples where we see already uh, in the word where we see encourage yourself being used uh, in, in, in application. Okay, uh, let's see. Six, chapter six. Verse two. Six, verse 10. The verse 10 is where he did now. Now this is the one before before Nebuchadnezzar was expecting everybody to pray to the golden calf. Oh, the sun's coming up behind me. Let me, let me change the angle of the camera here. <laughs> Hope you didn't have vertigo right there. <laughs> Amen. So, now in this case, now, now it's a different scenario. Before Nebuchadnezzar wanted them to pray to the golden calf, Nebuchadnezzar had a bad temper. Amen. Amen, Snurks. That's right. That's right. This attitude. We got to have Lori. Welcome, Arizona. Now, in the case of the lion's den, David, the king was actually set up. See, and I'm not David. Daniel wasn't set up. The king was set up. See, here again, you got haters. Just like you have at work. Just like you have at school. You, uh, just like you have, you have in life. You're going to always have haters. People who just hate you either because of who you are. They hate your anointing. They hate your love for the Lord. They hate God's favor in your life. You're going to be hated and there's nothing you're doing wrong and there's nothing you can do about it. Don't ever stop the, stop your light from shining just because somebody doesn't like you because you're trying to figure out, what am I doing wrong? Why don't they like me? They don't like your anointing because if they have no light, they don't follow Christ, then the, your light is blinding them and your anointing they don't even understand that your anointing is what's bothering them. They just don't like you because they have no light and they have no anointing. So don't ever get upset trying to figure out what did I do wrong? Because you're just being you. You're letting your light shine and no matter what's going on, you're going to let it shine. Amen. All right. Now, uh, so I want, I, want, I want to encourage all of you, especially who are dealing with workplace hatred, workplace jealousy. And, and like I told you that time when the lady got fired for saying, God bless you in the morning. And they went to human resources and told human resources that 
she's forcing God on us. By saying good morning, God bless you. I'm forcing God on you by saying God bless you. Then you know that's number the devil. But see, that's how some workplaces are. They're so everybody's so worried about taking God out of this, taking God out of schools. If God was still in the schools, one third of the great chaos going on in the schools would not be going on if God was in the schools. But way back when God was taken out of the schools, you took out the prayer. Praise God that many high schools, because you have to give everybody a right to have a club, there are many Christian teenagers who form a Christian club on the high school site. And they can't do anything about that because if somebody wants to create a Muslim club or whatever club, but see, that allows Christians to have a club because now there's some young Christian teenagers on fire for the Lord who want to keep the word of God in their life alive in school. If, if the administration is not doing it, then praise God, there's some young people on fire for the Lord who are starting the Christian groups in their own school. Amen. Now, Daniel's point in verse, uh, I mean, Daniel's point in verse 10. Now, oh, oh yeah. Now, so remember the story here, the, the king was, the king was set up, not Daniel. Daniel was just praising God like he always does. But again, here comes the haters. They knew Daniel had favor with this king, just like he had with Nebuchadnezzar. Now he got favor with Darius, King Darius. So the haters go to him saying, you know, uh, uh, you, got, you, you need to pass a law that if there is anybody praying to anything but you, O king, then you need to pass a law. They'll be thrown to lion's den. Now they knew that David prayed to Almighty God, but they hated his favor. Here comes jealousy. Here come the haters again. So they go to King and say, "Well, you need, uh, O King, you know, you need to pass a law that that uh, uh, that anybody who's worshiping anybody but you, they need to be thrown to lions." I say, "A king passes. Okay, you know that's a good idea. He passes the law, and then they come to him and tell him." Daniel is one who's not praying to him. Now the king is furious because he knows he's set up. He passed his own law to say anybody not praying to me is going to be thrown to the lions. At that point, he knew he was tricked. He couldn't do anything about it. He felt bad about it. But the haters came back. Oh, no, king. Remember, you said anybody who does not pray to you has to be thrown to the lions then. And so, verse, and, and so in verse 10, Daniel hears about this. Mm -hmm. Daniel hears about the law that's been passed, that if you're serving, a, a praying to anyone but the king, you will be thrown to lion's den. Now let's look at verse 10, Daniel 6, 10. Now when David knew that the writing was signed, he went home in his upper room with his windows open toward Jerusalem he knelt down on his knees three times that day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as was his custom since early days. Now, he didn't care. He said, just like Rashad, Meshach, and Abednego, hey, I will not pray to your golden calf or your golden whatever it is. Here it is again. I'm praying only to my God. I'm not praying to the king. What is the, who is the king? I'm praying to my father. Amen. So here again. The boldness. See, when you walk in the spirit, mm. when you walk in the spirit, and, and God, you, you need to be doing this, or you need to be doing that. Amen. You walk in boldly because you know who you are in Christ. We know who we are in Christ. We're not going to let anybody. Uh, in verse 17, once they put the uh, verse, uh, uh, then a stone was brought and laid on the mouth of the den after he got thrown into the den. The king sealed it with his own ring and with the sickness of his Lord that the purpose concerning Daniel might not be changed. Now, while, Dave, while Daniel's in the lion's den, the king went to his palace and spent the night fasting and no musicians were brought before him. Also, his sleep went for him. The king couldn't sleep because the king knew he'd been tricked and he was really hoping and it didn't say this, but we understand why he's really hoping that this God that Daniel prays to, 
I sure hope he's he. You know, I sure hope he saves him because nothing I can do about it. Because I passed this law to put him in the lion's den. And then next day, uh, and, 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 and verse twenty, and when he came out of the den, he cried with a lamenting voice to Daniel. Daniel spoke, saying, "Daniel, servant of the living God," as King spoke. Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God, whom you serve, continually been able? To deliver you from the lions? And then when Daniel answered in verse 22, My God sent his angels and shut the mouths of the lions, so they have not hurt me, because I was found innocent before him, the Lord. And also, O king, I have done no wrong before you. The king was exceedingly glad and commanded that they take him out of the out of lion's den. And Daniel was taken up out of the den, no injury whatever was found in him because he believed because he believed he believed in god see that's why we gotta hold on you hear me say it over and over again hold on to his promises the promises are not theories theories is something where i heard that basically theoretically no promises believe this and that will happen i promise you this i promise you that Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things you're praying for will be added to you. I can do all things through Christ, all things. I mean, the promises, these are things that for we read these promises in the word of God, that's what gives us strength, especially in the face of adversity. And say, so, and I want everybody to do your hardest to never say these words again. I'm depressed today. No, I want you to reword that. See, if you say, I'm depressed, you've just claimed depression. I'd rather you say, I, I, depression is trying to pull me down today. Because when you say, depression is trying to pull me down today, you're identifying the attacker. And you're saying, and I, re, I cast it out of my I cast it out of my mind, spirit, and home in the name of Jesus. Spirit of depression, I cast you out of my mind, out of my presence in the name of Jesus. Once you say, I'm so depressed, I, I'm having a bad day. No, a bad day is trying to get to me. See, when you say whatever it is that's stealing your joy is trying to get you, you're also reminding yourself it can't get me unless I let it. Oh, man. Oh, man. Sickness is trying to attack my body. Man, sickness is attacking my body. Now, if you say sickness is attacking my body, that is one thing. But if you say the one thing you, oh, if you say this headache is, this headache is killing me. No, no, no. Don't say headache is killing you because a headache will be killing you. You just claim death. We say that, as I said, two, three lessons ago. There's some sayings we got to make sure we reword the way we speak. You know, nothing, nothing that you say should be killing you. Man, your impatience is killing me. My, my back is killing me. My legs are killing me. Oh, man, this day is killing me. You're speaking death into your day. <laughs> You're speaking death into your body. We got enough troubles today. Don't add to it by speaking death and not life into your situation or whatever it is. So that's why I'm just make sure you always, always be aware of the way you word things. Sometimes we think we're just making a, a innocent statement, but that innocent statement could be breeding death instead of life. It could be a positive negative. I mean, uh, and, and so that's what we always want to make sure the way we word things. Amen, Snurks. Don't say things because life and death are in the like life and death are in the power of the tongue, and those who live it will eat of its fruit. Meaning, what you speak the most is what you're going to attract to your life. Even when you're feeling sick. While you're sitting there coughing and sneezing, and you got 103 degrees by your stripes, I'm healed, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I am healed. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> I am healed. Thank you, Jesus. Praise your name. I'm healed. <coughs> Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. I'm healed. See, while you're going through the sickness, you keep speaking by your stripes. I'm healed. Thank you, Lord. I guarantee when that flu that hit me a few weeks ago, that knocked me for a loop right after fellowship. I mean, literally, it hit me 10 minutes after we finished fellowship. All of a sudden, I felt, I started sneezing and coughing and a chills came across me. I didn't know what happened. And and it was like like suddenly. And next thing I know, I was I had to go back, back to bed. I was weak. I couldn't, I couldn't, I was freezing. 
And I said, okay, Lord, I start blessed. Praise God, Lord. This hit me on Thursday because that means I don't have fellowship Friday morning. I got it Friday night. But as you guys know, if you remember, I didn't have enough strength Friday night, but I had strength enough to record a lesson, but I didn't have enough strength to come on live. But I still slapped the devil upside his head because we still had a lesson in your face. <laughs> we still had a lesson, devil. I thank you, Jesus. Praise your name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Anyway, so anyway, that's what it's all about. This lesson is all about take your favorite scriptures. Whenever you feel yourself feeling down, you start empowering yourself. There's three uh, three scriptures that I wrote down that I uh, came across last night. Holy Spirit gave me. I mean, there's many. As you know, There's. I just love Psalm. Psalm has so many various types of, of scriptures that apply to almost everything you go through. The ones the Holy Spirit gave me last night, if you want to read them, read the entire three chapters. Uh, Psalm 7, Psalm 9, Psalm 11. Now, I don't, they're not amongst what I call my favorite, but once I read them, I said, wait a minute, I like these. Because I'd read through Psalms before, and I kind of circled the ones I liked at that time. For some reason, Psalm 7, 9, and 11, for some reason, Last night, it gave me it gave me empowerment. Probably the Lord said because the Lord knew what I was dealing with with the car and not being able to get to work, that the de depression was trying to get to me, anxiety was trying to get to me. Because I started, okay, now Lord, I missed three days of work, Lord. Here, here comes what's coming. Here comes a fear trying to come in. I missed three days of work. Okay, what you gonna do? You missed three days of work. Now one time before, here comes remembrance. Years ago, when I used to teach school, I was a substitute teacher for 20 years because I act, it worked perfect with acting. And I had a dry spell during uh, substitute teaching where I didn't teach for almost a week. I almost went into a panic attack because I'm going, okay, Lord, Lord, nobody's calling. I mean, Lord, I'm paid by the day. Your substitute teachers are paid by the day. We're not on salary. And Lord, I mean, I have five days work, five days work. It's almost like the Lord touched me on my shoulder through the Holy Spirit. He touched me on my shoulder. He said, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Is the school district your source or am I your source? Is the school district your source or am I your source? God shut my mouth. God, God shut my mouth so fast because I said, Lord, please forgive me. I'm panicking because I'm looking at only the school district as being my source. So because I wasn't getting any work for the school district, I'm acting like there is no other source. When God can drop a blessing on you from anywhere, pe people from out of the past who owe you money, a uh, 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 residual I completely forgot about. As a matter of fact, that's what happened. I think it was either residual or I got an acting job or something came out of nowhere that paid exactly the amount of all five days I missed. So therefore, what I, the money I was worried about losing was instantly replaced. Amen. So this is what I'm saying. When we when we go through a period that's a dry spill, don't go into panic. That means either God says, I need you to spend more time with me. But don't worry about it because I got your back. I need you to spend more time with me. But also I'm going to bless you as well because I need you to spend more time because I need to use you right now in a certain area. And while you're doing that, I'm going to take care of your needs because I know that you missed the uh, the work because of this or that, but because you kept ministering and you didn't let the situation stop letting me use you, then let me bless you over here. See, when we remember God can bless us in so many different sources, the one source we only know about is the job we got right now. Whatever we're doing right now to make money, that's to, to us, that's our, our source right now. Where God is the source above that source. God's the one that led us to that job, which means if you don't have that job working right now or you're not making money right now, God can bless the situation somewhere else. And that money that you worried about, well, how am I going to make up money? How am I going to do this? How, 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 how am I? Oh, 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 oh. Fear, fear. Oh, what am I going to do? Lord, help me. I don't see it. I don't know doors. What am I going to do? Panic. Oh, God. Oh, Lord, help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Anxiety attack. Those are not of God. None of those are of God. 
panic attack, panic attack is not a God. High blood pressure because you're stressed out is not a God. Worry is not a God. And even when you worry, have a stress attack, can't sleep at night, none of those is helping your problems. So you might as well stay calm, stand still, and give it to someone who can turn your life around and remove everything you're worried about. Provide every debt. Provide and give you favor for deadlines. You might give you may not be the money. He may give you the money, a supernatural overflow. You always hear me pray about to pay for whatever or supernatural favor. All of a sudden, people who acted like they couldn't extend the deadline, they give you extra time. And the extra time is all you needed. That's favor. God can bless you with money. He can bless you with favor, bless you with healing. God can bless us so many ways. We can't even think of all the ways. That's why what? His ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. We can't sit there and God, how are you going to bless me, Lord? I know you're going to bless me, Lord, but how are you going to do it? Don't worry about how God's going to do it. When you say, God, I give it to you, just sit there and thank you, Jesus, for my deliverance. Thank you for my healing, Lord. Thank you for, for pulling me through this. Whatever it is you're going through, just give it to him and say, thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord, for the victory. You're going through it right now. Lay off of your job and remind it, totally depend on God. I guarantee you, uh, Sherry, panic attacks are part of your past. And uh, they try to creep up on you. I, 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 Sherry, perfect wording. They try to they try to creep up on you. And when you as soon as you feel it coming, amen. Rebuke it, cast it out of your presence. See, nobody gets depressed by surprise. Nobody gets angry, revengeful, negative. Nobody gets negative suddenly. You always feel it starting first in your spirit. You feel the heaviness coming upon you. That's your, you can feel the spirit, especially when you're prayed up. How do you get an instant answer in prayer, Jorgen? Unfortunately, you have to wait for it. <laughs> See, so Jorgen, let me ask, and, and, and that's a good question, Jorgen. How do you get an instant, instant answer for prayer? Sometimes the prayer will be answered right as you pray it. Other times, the answer may actually come from somebody who comes to your house and says something to you. That's your answer. Sometimes it's a phone call. Your answers sometimes come from some places you never even thought it was coming from. That's why once you pray for it, keep your, like, like, like JD says, keep your radar on because God's answer can come from anything. Uh, I mean, promise of a, a promise answer. Well, once, once you lift the prayer up, Brother Jorgen, the the as the prayers go answered. That's that's automatically. When you uh bad connection, you better be gone. Be gone. I will because that's the uh uh. Let's see here. Jesus name, Jesus name. One second. Praise God. Praise God. Uh, uh. So 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 when, once you lift the prayer up, Brother Jorgen, the prayer is going to be answered. So you don't have to you have to have the will God answer it is when will he answer it? And see, that's what's totally out of our hands. You always hear me say, once you lift the prayer up and say, Lord, let's just give an example, Jorgen. Let's say, uh, Lord, please deliver me. I like what your post was talking about. Lord, please deliver me from this anger I have in the name of Jesus. Give me give me a blessing, Lord. Reveal to me how to deal with my anger. Well, we always always say, Thou shalt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee. Now, let's say you just prayed for the Lord to help you deal with your anger. And the answer to that may be actually, uh, I just need to know he heard me. If it came out your mouth, he heard you, Jorgen. Once you say, you see, that, that's what the one I forgot which, which scripture is, Psalms. He knows what we need before we say it. So we don't really, we, we're saying it because we're practicing prayer. But God already knows what we need before we even open our mouth. He's just waiting to see if we're going to have faith and if we're going to wait on the Lord. Because in the flesh, that's what's attacked. The devil will automatically attack your flesh to make you wonder, when is God going to move? When is God going to answer my prayer? God, what's going on? And then here comes, maybe the, God, maybe the Lord didn't hear me. Maybe I didn't pray right. Those are all lies from the devil to make you think, God didn't hear you. 
God's not moving. God gave up on you. You're not worthy. All those are lies from the pit of hell to make you think your prayer to the Lord did not work. When in actuality is working, but now we have to wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord in his time. And what do you do while you're waiting? You just thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for my victory over anger. Thank you, Lord, for my victory over debt. Thank you for my victory over financial struggle. Thank you, you, you keep thanking him for the victory over whatever you prayed for. Like, I, I, I thank him for my healing every single day. Even though, now my back is probably 70% better, but it's still, it's still there. Uh, but it's a lot better than it was before. But God can speak to us. God speaks to you most of the time, Jorgen, when you say you do something, you know, something told me I should not do this today. That's God already talking to you. We make the mistake of saying, I had a feeling. Something told me. I knew I should have done that. Those three responses means you actually heard the Lord's voice, but you didn't realize it. God doesn't always speak to us through words. It's almost a, a quiet voice that we mistakenly say something told me. I had a feeling. All those are different ways the Holy Spirit is talking to us and validating what we're praying for. And we don't know which way he's going to answer. Oh, yeah, 37. Yeah, uh, Brother Bird, put those favorite scriptures in archive. I love Psalm 37, 91. I, matter of fact, I recorded all three of those on YouTube, Brother Bird. 37, 91, 119 are all powerful scriptures. So basically, Brother Jorgen, the answer to that question is, is to just keep your eyes on him by reading the word and thanking him every single day for the victory over what you prayed for. He heard you. We have no control over when. And that's where our faith comes in. And sometimes it's a faith test. The answer won't come until he sees that we're applying our faith. The tool that he's given us to be victorious is our faith. If we use it, if we don't use it, our victory doesn't come because we're not activating our faith to bring the victory. He's going to test you. Okay, I'm going to I just wait to see how long it's going to take to to for him to use my use his faith. I I actually wrote a blog the Lord put me through years ago, and I I titled it "God Will Get Your Attention." He'll stop everything in your life. He'll stop everything, all the income, and you're going, Lord, what am I doing wrong? What am I doing wrong? And when, that, when I was asking that question, and the, I told you this before, the answer was, this is what I got to do to get you to pray more, huh? Oh, my gosh. I said, Lord, please forgive me. I should be praying like this every day, not just when everything stopped. And sometimes, Brother jo Jorgen, that question you asked me, and, and that goes for everybody. Sometimes the reason things stop in our life and don't seem to be answered is God is wanting us to learn to pray more, to spend more time with him. So he's going to give us a drought season to increase our prayer life to where it should be without the drought. We should be praying intensely on fire for the Lord, even in good times, just like bad. You shouldn't even see a difference between your praise in good times and bad. Matter of fact, when things are going bad, you should be praising more intense. And some of the times I know, I mean, sometimes you hear me doing uh, praise and worship, and sometimes you might he uh, hear me going a little, a little extra crazy. And sometimes that's because we're going through some serious attacks here through the ministry. And, and my reaction to a serious attack is a more intense praise because I know the devil's wanting me to get depressed or get worrisome and steal my joy where I'll go completely berserk in praise to shut him up and slap him upside the head and say, in your face. It's like I wrote that program. You will never steal my joy, devil. You will never steal my joy. And never is a positive negative. You will never steal my joy, devil. So go way, way, way in my window. Go way, way, way in my window. If I have to catch the bus the next two weeks and we're doing praise and worship from, the, from in the park somewhere, I'm still going to praise the Lord. Doesn't matter because he's devil not going to steal your joy unless you let him. He can't do a single thing to us. He has no power unless we let him have power over us because we've been given the authority to trample over whatever he throws. Like Ephesians 6.10, stand 
Stand firm that you'll be able to stand against the wiles of the devil, against the darts, against the distractions, against whatever attack. We're going to be standing. What it is, the Bible doesn't say we might stand. It says stand that you will be able to stand against the darts or wiles or distractions of the devil. And it, is, it didn't say all there, but it didn't say some. If it didn't work in every case, it would have said, stand that you may be able to make it through most of the attacks of the devil. It didn't say most. It said, stand that you'll be able to, uh, 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 therefore stand that you'll be able to stand against the wiles of the devil, against whatever he throws. And that's what we're talking about. And, and, and then you're being attacked in the name of Jesus. And just whatever the attack is, call it by name, Brother Jorgen. If it's depression, anger, Call it spirit of anger in the name of Jesus. I cast you out of my mind, out of my presence in the name of Jesus. Spirit of depression, spirit of suicidal thoughts, spirit of failure, whatever it is, whatever your feeling is, that's the name of the spirit. Whatever you're being attacked by, you call that spirit by that name. If it's depression, spirit of depression. If it's spirit of depression, suicidal thoughts, spirit of failure, spirit of giving up, and then I cast you out of my mind, out of my spirit, out of my home, out of my presence, back to the pit of hell from which you came in the name of Jesus. You cast it out because it's trying to get into your spirit. You feel it. You're saying right now, I'm, I'm attacked. You're feeling the attack. And those sit there and let it attack you. You start using the power that we have in us, power in the name of Jesus, the power over everything on the earth, under the, under the earth, above the earth. You use your words, speak. That's when you speak and use the power in the name of Jesus, in Jesus' name. Amen. You keep speaking it. Your 15-year-old is still uh, in bed. A good note. Amen. 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 Your daughter was baptized this past Sunday. Praise God, Sherry. Amen. And say amen. So, so even when we're talking to our children, she's constantly dizzy. Uh, and lay, and lay, uh, lay your hands on your daughter every single day, Sunday, Daisy. And, 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 and speak over her uh, when she's dizzy or even when she's asleep. Speak healing to her. Lay your hands on her and say, in the name of Jesus, Lord, uh, take away this dizziness. Heal my daughter right now. And once you've laid your hands on her, you make a part of your daily confession as if it's yourself. Thank you, Lord, for healing my daughter. Thank you for healing my husband. Thank you for healing my family member. Once you've prayed for the person, you're interceding for them by thanking the Lord for healing them, delivering them, giving them victory over addiction, whatever the prayer is. Once you've laid hands on them and prayed for him, them directly, you start thanking the Lord for them through intercessory prayer, just like as if you're praying for yourself. Amen. Until it comes to pass. So, and, and also play a play for your daughter while she sleep, a Sunday Daisy. I don't know if you're already doing that, but play God's healing hour power and bask in his presence even while she sleeps because sometimes the things our kids or we're going through mentally you is sometimes that's actually an attack that's causing the mental reaction and the way you know this is if you play basking in his presence or god's healing our power and you suddenly know, notice a difference in behavior that lets you know that the source of that mental reaction is not physical, but it's coming from the spiritual realm. Sometimes, sometimes they need medication. But when a doctor says, uh, there's nothing we can do, we don't know why she feels this way. We don't know why they feel that way. I guarantee you, when a doctor says, I don't know why they're doing this, why they're feeling this, that's usually a spiritual attack. And once you address that spiritually, binding, loosing, part one and two, Lay hands, pray, touch, and agree. All those different ways are ways of understanding. Use anointing oil. Yeah, anointing. If you got anointing oil, uh, you go online, you order it. Go to any Christian bookstore. They'll have it. Put anointing oil that's been already been prayed over and put your hand on them and pray healing and pray for victory or whatever it is that needs to be prayed for to bring that into that situation. Amen. Uh, Sherry, you dreamed last night you were talking to the to the stars and God and told him I love him I repent of all my sins pray for my family and it seems that the stars were alive it's just Sherry that's quite possible <laughs> remember, <clears throat> remember remember many times you you could be actually you you think you're dreaming see that's why God can use dreams 
in so many ways before I close. God can use dreams in so many ways where you think, you think you're actually traveling to somewhere else. You're sleeping in bed, but nothing says your spirit always stays in the bed. Your body's in the bed, but sometimes you say you feel like something feels so real. And then when somebody wakes you up, you have this incredible feeling of speed. This happened to me years ago, where it was as if I was somewhere somewhere else. And when I was actually, actually, I fell asleep. <laughs> I worked graveyard shift and I accidentally fell asleep. And I had this vision that I was, I was in a city in the clouds. And this figure with long white hair and a long beard was talking to me. This is before I even got into ministry. Uh, and then uh, I was I was being pulled on because I was trying to understand understand how God wanted to use me. A friend of mine said, well, that, that means that God's going to use you uh, in some way in the future. And you being taught how you need to walk and you being taught in that, that vision dream, he's working on you. Then this was 15 years, 15 years ago, uh, like 2000, like 1998 when this happened. And now I became a minister. But but when a car drove up to the door, I didn't know I was asleep. A car honked their horn because they knew I was asleep. But the feeling of speed I felt, and as if I came jarring back to my body, I said, where was I just now? It was as if I was somewhere else because the speed, when that horn, when that horn blew, it was almost like I saw just a, a blur of light. And next thing I knew, my eyes opened. And I had I actually said to myself, where was I just now? Because in our sleeping hours, our spirit man, which never sleeps, can be doing anything and working throughout the night. So, so Sherry, you probably were indeed <laughs> somewhere else talking to the Lord and actually doing more than you thought. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for another great lesson today, Lord, just to know how to encourage ourselves, Lord, how to keep speaking your word over our lives, over our situations, Lord, over everything we do in life, Lord. We, we, we guarantee, Lord, we promise, Lord, and we commit, Lord, that no matter what we're going through, Lord, we will always encourage ourselves and remember your promises, remember your word for our lives, remember all that you want us to do in every situation of our life, Lord. We hold on, we hold on, we hold on to your promises, Lord. We hold on, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We praise your name, O oh Lord. We thank you for victory over every situation we're dealing with in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, thank you, Lord. Glory to your name, O oh Lord. Praise your name, Lord. And thank you, Lord, for the fellowship, Lord. Thank you for allowing me to have this lesson today, Lord, regardless of the attack of the praise will be, O Lord. Bless the praise will be, O Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord, that whatever is wrong with it, Lord, it shall come to pass. And we shall continue on what needs to be happening today, Lord. Lord, touch every family member, every fellowship member, in the name of Jesus, Lord. You know the area of need right now, in the name of Jesus, Lord. And we claim our victory right now over every situation, over every challenge, over every door that seems to be closed, Lord. We claim our victory right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. And we thank you, we thank you, we thank you for deliverance, for victory, for breaking down bondage and, 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 and the walls that seem to be doors that close, Lord. We thank you for healing, supernatural healing in everyone's body, Lord who's dealing with an infirmary. We thank you, Lord, for supernatural provision, overflow and abundance, Lord. Let your let your, let your light, light and blessings just fall down. Let it rain down, Lord. Let your blessings rain down on anyone who has a need, a financial need right now in the name of Jesus, a supernatural overflow and abundance. Hallelujah. Supernatural debt cancellation, Lord. Let it touch all those who have a financial need in any area. Restore, Lord. Loose, Lord. We loose in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Restoration in every area of our lives. We take back what the devil has stolen. We take it back our joy. Take it back our peace. Take it back our finances. Take it back. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Think about, oh, yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just we're taking back everything the devil has stolen. And we always remember, Lord. We always remember the power we have in you in the name of Jesus. We never let go, Lord. 
we commit to always holding on to your unchanging hand, the same yesterday, today, and forevermore, Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for healing Wanda's back. Oh, no, I think we're healing, uh, yeah, uh, Sister Wanda's back. Thank you for healing my back. Thank you for healing every infirmity, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We pray as a fellowship, corporately. You say we're two or more gathered in your name. You're in the midst, Lord. And we thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your blessings upon this fellowship. Right now, I bind the spirits of retribution, revenge, retaliation. If I'm coming against any fellowship member, if I'm coming against any family member of a fellowship member, from being attacked only because of the participation in this fellowship, and we lose those demonic forces and spirits from their assignment of attacking us any further and cast them all back to the pit of hell from whence they came in the name of Jesus, Lord. And Lord, continue to loose your hedge of protection, your anointing. Let your anointing cover every person within the sound of my voice, live or archive. From this day forward, Lord, let your anointing cover us head to foot. Your anointing, blood of Jesus, cover us. Blood of Jesus, flowing through our blood vessels. Thank you, Jesus. Healing every diseased and diseased cell in our body. Your anointing, blessing every environment we're in. No matter where we go, Lord, your anointing is letting that light shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine wherever I go. Regardless of whatever is happening in my life, I'm going to let it shine. I'm going to let it shine. I'm going to let it shine.